whole reason I track DC Fast Charger implementation in the United States is because I believe it's indication of EV adoption through market analysis by the people who have money to spend as investments. And sure enough, the spending spree continues this past week. Let's go over some of the highlights. There's plenty going on, but I'm just going to touch some of the highlights of what's going on uh, just in this past week. First off, the Mercedes-Benz high-powered charging network, and Mercedes-Benz is married to the IANA um, group that uh, does DC fast chargers through the IANA brand, but they also, in order to uh, do a two-prong approach, have their own native network, uh, branded the Mercedes-Benz high-powered charging uh, network opened a station at a Simon Mall. They've announced that they were going to be partnering with Simon Mall. Initially, they were partnering with Bucky's exclusively, and then they started branching out to other locations. And we're seeing them expand into multiple different uh, properties now that they're starting to put their stations into. Uh, one of the uh, arrangements was with Simon Mall and in Round Rock, Texas, immediately off Interstate 35. Round Rock is close to Austin. <clears throat> eight stalls. So it's not uncommon for Simon Mall to operate like these premium outlets or these discount malls. Uh, they're really large. They're bigger than the anchor malls. I've actually got one near me um, that has an Electrify America station in it. So um, those extremely large malls tend to be bucking the trend of mall blight and uh, attracting people regardless just because of the uh, the novelty effect of these super large malls and the fact that there's discount shopping and I guess if they're uh, placed in locations where there's a vibrant economic um, undertone those malls do very well and it looked as though the Simon Mall that they selected for uh, this station in Round Rock Texas is one of those malls it was uh, it looks very vibrant so that opened Tesla is in the process of continuing in a uninterrupted stream. You know, there was talk of their shuttering the entire supercharger program uh, last year, and it never really happened. I watched the numbers. It's just a relentless uh, increase in number of stations coming out of the Tesla super supercharger team. It never really stopped. And uh, this week, we came across something that is rather unusual. They increased station count uh, normally in the 20s, um, but occasionally up into the 40s. But this week, we had a crowd pleaser at 64 stalls. It was at a place called Smart and Final in Montebello, California, which is west of Los Angeles, which when you look at it in the images on PlugShare, it's like if a Olympic sprinter had a starting gun fire and they started to run down this line it would take them a while to get to the end of them and by the end by the time they got to the end of this row of superchargers they would be a little small dot on the horizon i mean this is a very very large station 64 stalls in the center of los angeles at least in the center of the greater los angeles metropolitan area so they're definitely on a mission to solve the electric vehicle charging problem in areas that are underserved. 64 stalls in the center of Los Angeles is definitely going to be very helpful. I know they recently put in a very large uh, Tesla supercharger station in Chicago near O'Hare because I don't know if everyone remembers, not this past winter, but the winter before, there was all these uh, headlines about the um, electric vehicle queuing as a result of a cold spike in Chicago. And I don't know why Norway can survive cold spikes, but Chicago cannot. But regardless, Tesla showed up with a very large 96 stall station in the Chicago land area in order to help alleviate some of the uh, congestion going on in the Chicago land area. Similarly, 64 stalls in the center of Los Angeles is going to help uh, there as well. Obviously, they don't have to deal with cold snaps, but I guess sporting events or something, I don't know. Um, so that happened, but it's not just the 64 stall. Also, uh, Las Vegas is notorious for being a location that's um, a oasis in the desert. So a charging stop uh, is always called for when you're going through Las Vegas into points elsewhere. The problem is that there's always congestion and queuing in Las Vegas. 
Tesla added 24 stalls in North Las Vegas. They have been opening stalls in Las Vegas, um, but it was in Las Vegas proper. So they opened a new one in North Las Vegas, uh, 24 stalls. Electrify America did two station openings this past week, one in Angelica, New York, four stalls through their partnership with um, Evolve New York, which is a state-run CPO, which is also where a lot of the uh, NEVI funds for the state of New York were funneled into. Instead of being distributed to third-party CPOs, the state of New York actually had a NEVI-like program before NEVI was a thing. Uh, they were cool before Nevi was cool. And uh, so City of New York was just funneling funds into the Evolve New York initiative. And some of these stations, I think, are uh, either partially funded uh, through those state funds or through Nevi funds. I'm not sure if Angelica is, is Nevi funded or not. But four stalls opened in a very picturesque location. Secondly, uh, there is a hotel brand called Aloft, and they're quite popular near airports. We have them here in the greater Charlotte metropolitan area. And in Dallas, Arlington, there is an Aloft that got a six stall Electrify America station. One thing that is kind of surprising about this one is normally Electrify America stations take years in order to be commissioned. Uh, They'll be spotted and people will be hopping mad that these things are sitting in the ground and not being energized and commissioned. In this particular case, it was a sleeper site. No one on PlugShare knew anything about this location. And all of a sudden, bang, it just opened one day. And I actually was um, mentioning it on uh, my private YouTube channel. And everyone was surprised that there was a station. They're like, what? A station out there? And uh, so it just goes to show that Electrify America is definitely on their game. They are not down for the count. They are still in the process of opening new stations. And they're doing so seemed seemingly with greater efficiency and speed. Uh, so they seem to be um, starting to hit their stride a little bit. And this station in Dallas, Arlington, is an indication of that. Up north in cow country, Wisconsin, the uh, brand Quick Trip has uh, received multiple Nevi awards, but they were also doing their own builds uh, with their own money. And they had, uh, I think it was um, four stations open, and then they started to open additional ones. The one that opened this week is in Mount Horeb, Wisconsin, and other stations in the Quick Trip portfolio had um, uh, canopies. Uh, this one does not, but still it has the very characteristic uh, pull-in four-stall uh, with the uh, dual-handle dispensers. So you could either select the uh, J3400 or the CCS handle at each one of the different stalls. So they're really nice, uh, picturesque locations, uh, brand new hardware. And uh, apparently, from what I've heard from uh, people who live in the Wisconsin area, Quick Trip is uh, somewhat of a premium brand. They do a very good job of taking care of their customers. And as a result, the loyalty to the brand seems to be pretty uh, pronounced. And there was a lot of excitement with Quick Trip starting to venture into electric vehicle charging at their locations as well. Next, a CPO called Electric Era has been quietly building up a pretty sizable portfolio. Excuse me. And this past week, they opened their 17th electric vehicle charging station in a town called Hazard, Kentucky. And when you look on it on a map, I've actually traveled through here. Uh, One of the places I traveled to near here is a place called Prestonburg, Kentucky. And when you get there, you recognize you're driving an EV in unfriendly territory. There are no chargers. In fact, when I went to Prestonburg, I actually had to rely on level one charging in order to get there for a small portion of the trip. It's a very difficult area to penetrate. And the reason being is it's the heart of coal country. It's uh, coal is king out there. And there really aren't electric vehicle chargers. But Electric Era opened a beautiful looking uh, four stall station in Hazard, Kentucky. And it's kind of strange. It's not really near anything. It's kind of a unique location in order to build into. They must have been uh, contacted by a site owner who enlisted them in order to have the station deployed. I don't think Electra Era uh, sought out this location uh, because it's not near an interstate and Hazard's not a very big town, uh, but is definitely underserved as far as electric vehicle charging goes. 
So for sure, it's going to be uh, very heavily used. And that whole West Virginia area and eastern uh, Kentucky, uh, where coal is king, there's very few electric vehicle chargers, and it's very slim pickings. Normally when you see one, it's either at a dealership with price gouging, or it's a Tesla supercharger station, and hopefully it'll be open to non-Teslas because uh, most of those areas are almost uh, untraversable in, a, in an electric vehicle unless you rely on level two in order to get you across those uh, stretches. So good to see Electra, Electric Era stepping in to fill in a dark part of the map with a brand new PIP. Lastly, in some late breaking news, just today, BP Pulse hit the wires with a press release that said them and Waffle House, the very well-known uh, diner brand, are now in partnership in order to deploy Alpitronic 400 kilowatt chargers at Waffle Houses, which, if you think about it, Waffle Houses are open 24-7, 365, never closed. In fact, it, it takes a significant force of nature to shut down a Waffle House. I lived in Florida, <clears throat> and um, whenever there was a hurricane, the first responders all congregated at the Waffle Houses because the Waffle Houses didn't close during hurricanes. And uh, so they, they served the uh, police officers and the firemen uh, while the hurricane was raging. And uh, they would rate hurricanes by whether or not the Waffle Houses were closing or not. Normally, you'd have to get to a Cat 4 hurricane in order for the Waffle Houses to close. Anyway, point being that it is a good partner for BP Pulse to align with in order to put electric vehicle charging, charging on their property because they're open 24-7, 365. And uh, the state of Florida also has their own state program. Actually, it's not a state program. Let me back up. It's uh, Florida Power and Light, which is the local utility has an electric vehicle charging program. And they too had been uh, selecting Waffle Houses as properties to build into. But the BP Pulse uh, press release indicates that it's not just in the state of Florida. They actually call out uh, Texas, Georgia, Florida, and other areas throughout the Southeast uh, where they're going to be putting electric vehicle chargers into. And it's a little bit unclear if uh, BP Pulse is paying for this or Waffle House is paying for it. And I suspect what's going on is BP Pulse is going to be putting them on the property and paying for the in installations, and Waffle House will somehow be paying for the electricity or the uh, just providing the site host. I'm not exactly sure the details of the agreement. It doesn't spell it out in the press release. But regardless, a partnership has been formed, and BP Pulse is now venturing into another um, set of um, portfolio locations in order for their stations to go into. And they're definitely on their game. They've got multiple things going on. In fact, I just uh, did an update where they're now up to four gigahubs spotted, one of which are open in the Logan Airport area, but the Los Angeles gigahub at LAX is very soon to open. San Francisco International Airport, the uh, gigahub there is uh, looking like it's complete. I don't think it's energized yet, but it's very close. And lastly, Chicago O'Hare Airport is now fully in swing under construction with chargers now spotted on site and canopy posts in the ground already. So another very large charging site going into um, uh, the BP Pulse Gigahub portfolio. And the one in Chicago is kind of interesting because it's immediately adjacent to a very large Tesla supercharger. The one I mentioned at the beginning of this video, the 96 stall at the Holiday Inn Express outside of the Chicago Hare Airport. It's actually in the property adjoining to that very large station. The Tesla station doesn't really have any facilities whatsoever. So if you're um, if you're patroning the uh, Tesla supercharger, basically you would have to go to the either the BP Pulse gas station where the um, Giga Hub is going to be, or you would have to go into the Holiday Inn Express in order to use a restroom facility. So a little bit awkward there, but the BP Pulse Giga Hub will be uh, affiliated with the BP Pulse, uh, the BP gas station, uh, where there's you know full convenience store with all the amenities that you would expect, and you also have a canopy, and it's a little bit closer to the interstate. So I think BP Pulse might actually win the game for traffic against that very large he headline grabbing 96 stall Tesla supercharger station. So we'll have to see how it plays out. It's going to be interesting. Anyway, thanks for watching.